to share with you what I've been making lately slash kind of a holiday wardrobe. Um, my husband and I will be going to Europe for a very big holiday in about two months so I've given myself this excuse to make all these pieces that I've always wanted but don't necessarily need in my wardrobe but I hope you will enjoy looking at them. These are not the only things that I'll be bringing with me because obviously I need other things like jeans and other shorts and things like that. I'm slowly trying to um, have more and more um, handmade pieces in my wardrobe but there are things that I probably won't make, things like jeans and just just anything denim really because I think it's really hard to get that nice sand washed effect that they can do at you know in in factories and things like that. I might end up bringing all of these with me, I might end up bringing only a few pieces but I'm just really excited to share with you what I've made so far. I do want to apologize for how wrinkly some of these pieces are. The truth is I don't own a tripod yet and I was using my ironing board as my tripod when I was filming all the cutaways. So I hope you still enjoy it. Just use your imagination and just imagine that everything was nice and smooth. <laughs> so the first piece that I would love to show you is this striped jumpsuit. This is probably my favorite make. Um, this is probably my favorite make ever ever and I haven't really been sewing clothes for that long probably only for a few years and um, so it is this striped jumpsuit and it's made out of this really nice textured cotton from Spotlight. It has some weight to it but it's fairly thin and drapey and I thought it it kind of has that linen-ish look to it um, and I think it's just going to be really really comfortable. It almost has a little bit of stretch this way as well so that makes it really really comfy to wear it is a hack of the Claudia dress by Tassidi Fabrics and also the new look 6350 culottes as well um, the only changes I made well what I did was I, I had cut the bodice at the waistline added seam allowance and and then I just basically attached the pants to it but for the back of the jumpsuit, instead of keeping the original kind of back of the bodice, I drafted these triangular ties, um, so it will just be tied at the back. The main thing that I had to match up were the front of the bodice and the front of the pants. And they just matched perfectly, so that was really, really cool. And as for the culottes, I did shave down the sides a little bit because if you looked at the design of the original pattern, um, the sides were actually quite flared out. It had that quite full um, culotte look to it. But I was really after a straight-legged maxi pants. So that's what I did and it just turned out really nicely. I made it so that it's like half or one centimeter off, off the ground. Um, so then I can easily wear flats with this. I don't necessarily have to wear heels with it because when I'm in Europe, I'll, I'm going to be walking around a lot and I don't want to be wearing heels with it. And that's the best thing about making your own clothes. Being a very short person, I have never bought, you know, a maxi dress or a pair of maxi pants that I haven't had to take up like four or five centimeters just so that I can wear it with heels. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with this make. Oh, sorry. I'm really, really pleased with this make. And I hope you liked it too. The next piece I'd like to share with you would be this skirt. I'm just wearing it with a plain white t-shirt from Cotton On or something. I do have a me made white t-shirt but it was in the wash so I couldn't get it out that day. This was made out of um, a cotton called Mexican Poncho fabric from Spotlight once more and it almost has these like mini little navy tassels kind of woven into it and I just really really love it. This was made from a basic pencil skirt pattern that I got for free um, with my teaching accreditation course that I did with Berta Style. So this was basically free and um, it was a pencil skirt but obviously I've kind of chopped it um, to a uh, mini length. And I just really, really love this. I've got an invisible zipper at the back. 
Um, and yeah, I, I don't really have much to say about it except I really, really like it and it just looks really summery. The next item is something that is a little bit fancier. So this is a rosy dress that is made out of this cotton and linen blend. Oh, hair. I've, and it's got this lovely tropical leaf print all over. This was a rosy slash um, ultimate pencil skirt hack. So I fitted the top first and then I just matched up all the darts at the, um, at the front and also at the back. And that was it. This this didn't take much fabric at all because being a pencil skirt, you don't really need much fabric. And the rosy top didn't really require much fabric at all. So I reckon I had made this one out of, I reckon a meter, maybe a meter and maybe 1.2 meters. So, and this is something that I'm gonna maybe bring with me in case we go out for a fancy dinner one night or something like that. And I think I'm, I, I really can't wait to wear it. I have already worn this out a few times and it's just, it's just really comfortable to wear. And even though it is a linen, it's a slightly lighter weight linen. So it's not, it's not stiff at all. So I really, really like it. You know how linen can sometimes feel quite scratchy if it's, you know, a certain blend, but this cotton and linen blend is, it's quite soft. So I really, really love it. The next combo is my So Over It City Break Erin skirt and also my Ultimate Silk Cami. I'm going to talk about the Silk Cami very quickly first. So I made it out of, I, I didn't make it out of silk, I made it out of this lovely polyester that I got from Japan um, last year and it's a really really lovely fabric to work with except it doesn't iron so what happened was after assembling the whole top the lining kept kind of coming forward even though i had already understitched it and, and everything so what i did was i just added a line of stitching all the way around the neck um the neck hole and also the two arm holes so yeah on the erin skirt i um i did it in the same way as um, the original instructions except I changed the shape of the pocket so I didn't really like the straight pocket design because I felt like firstly I felt like it was a lot of stress on the fabric every time I had to put my hand in and I just really love that curved um, look so all I did was for the pocket facing and for the pocket itself I've just altered the shape of the opening and that's really all I did. So it was the easiest, easiest change to the pattern. I really, really love this because it looks really sophisticated. And um, yeah, yeah, I don't really have much to say about it except I really, really like this. The next dress was actually kind of a Tilly and the Buttons Bettine dress hack. But I don't know if, if I can even call it a hack anymore because I've changed it so much. So. This is just kind of like a shift dress with roughly sleeves and also a roughly hem as well. And I've also added a belt to tie up the waist just to give it a bit more shape. What I did was I took the original Bateen um, pattern and I widened the neck hole and I also made it much higher. So I basically turned it into a boat neck. And then for the armholes, I brought the armholes down a fair bit more and I made the bodice um, much wider and I simply just extended that to however long I wanted the dress. And for the ruffles, I basically cut three strips of fabric. That is double the measurement of the, well, two of them were double the measurement of the armhole and one of them was double the measurement of the bottom of the dress. Well, I cut it up out of two pieces, but basically very, very long strips of fabric. And I just gathered it, and before I sewed um, the armholes, I attached these ruffles first, and then I just sewed it down in one stitch. And then I just finished it off with a really narrow hem. And that's, that's really all I did. For the belt loops, 
I followed this tutorial on Pinterest. I'm going to see if I can find the link to it again. Um, but it's a really, really simple way of doing a thread loop on your sewing machine. So you don't have to do it by hand anymore. The next two pieces I'd like to share with you are my mini scalloped skirt and also my dove blouse out of this lovely rayon. But I'm just going to talk about the skirt very quickly first. So I made it out of the same denim that I made my Erin skirt out of, but I used the Berta style pencil skirt pattern that I made my Mexican poncho skirt out of, um, except this time I made it even shorter and I moved the zip to the side and also I added these two really cute scallop, I don't know if you can see, I added these two really cute scallop detail um, at the front and they hit the middle of my thigh and I just feel like that gives it a really kind of girly detail to the skirt. It makes your legs look, look just that little bit longer but at the same time, it doesn't look too girly and too childlike. I think sometimes when I wear things that are really cutesy, like, you know those scalloped skirts that go all, all the way around? I feel like I end up looking like a child in it because I'm so small and I do look kind of younger than I am, really. My friends don't think so, but some people have told me that. So I don't want to look like a child. I did want something different with this skirt, so that's what I did, and I ended up really, really liking it. The next top, I'm not really sure if I'll end up bringing this with me, because it it doesn't look like a summery, summery top, but I know, but I, I've heard that in the UK, the, su the UK summer, especially in June, which is at the beginning of summer as well, it's is not as hot as it gets in Australia, so I think it will be nice to bring something with a longer sleeve just in case if it gets chillier. So this is um, the Dove Top by Megan Nielsen. And you'll see that I've straightened the hem and I've also made the back longer than the front and that way I can choose to half tuck it. The last piece I'd like to share with you is the one that I'm wearing right now. It is the Claudia dress in this green, I would say, um, the colour was actually called grape. Um, green at Spotlight. Firstly, I've hacked it to a mini length and I've also added a piece of elastic to the back. So I've sewn it in between the facing and also the outer fabric to kind of ruch it in a little bit because it was really gapy when I first made it but then it wasn't so gapy that I could shave down the two sides because I feel like that would just kind of stress the fabric a little bit every time when I put it on. So that was my best resort and that meant I could still move around and I don't have to worry about you know the sides gaping and people being able to like see into the dress which is what I don't want. So those are all the pieces that I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed looking at them and if you're interested in more sewing related videos or maybe other videos um, feel free to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye! Yeah. Hi.